The following question reads that some properties of group 5 elements are shown. So that's nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, antimony and bismuth. It's uh, Their properties are given. Uh, melting points, boiling points and the electrical conductivity. Now, uh, he's saying use the information in the table to predict the physical state of nitrogen at minus 200 degrees centigrade. So you're given you're given the you're given the melting point and you're also given the boiling point of nitrogen. Now minus two hundred is a temperature that's between the two values. So minus two hundred degrees centigrade is between the two values. Uh, minus two hundred and ten is the melting point. Minus uh, one ninety six is its boiling point. So if you look at the number uh, number line, minus two hundred is going to come in the middle. So uh, the state of nitrogen is going to be liquid at minus two hundred because uh, above the boiling point, it's going to be a gas. Below the melting point, it's going to be a solid. And in between, between the melting and boiling point, the substance is going to be a liquid. So, so the first thing is uh, that it's going to be a liquid. So the explanation is going to be it's going to be a liquid as uh, minus 200 degrees centigrade is greater than the melting point. Uh, but it's lower than the boiling point. So it's in between the two values. So any temperature that's in between the melting and boiling point, the substance is going to be, it's going to be uh, a liquid. Now the next one is we need to predict the melting point of arsenic. So let's go back to the table, have a look at the table and you would notice that the melting point of nitrogen is very low. Then the melting point increases, then it increases further. And then at the end, it's, uh, it's decreasing. So we need to uh, we need to predict the melting point of uh, arsenic. So it's probably going to be in between the two values. So 44 and 631. So it it would be probably you can you can just take an estimate. Something in between would be 320 degrees centigrade. So so this would be uh, if we predict according to the trend, the melting point is going to be 320 degrees centigrade. Let's now move to the next part of the question, which is. Uh, Use the information in the table to explain how the structure and bonding in nitrogen is going to be different from the structure and bonding in bismuth. So uh, let's go back, have a look at the table. And based on the properties of, uh, let's look at bismuth. It has high melting and boiling points, relatively high melting point. Boiling point is uh, very high. And it's conducting electricity in solid state. So so the structure of bismuth, if you look at the property, it's a, it's probably a metallic substance because metals have high melting and boiling points and they conduct electricity in solid state. If you look at nitrogen, nitrogen has low melting and boiling points and it's a non-conductor. So it's, a, it's acting as a simple covalent molecule. So nitrogen is acting as a simple, so it's acting as a simple or its properties match that of a simple covalent molecule. Based on the property, simple covalent molecules have low melting and boiling points and they do not conduct electricity. So let's go back to our question. And we need to uh, use the information in the table to explain how the structure and bonding in nitrogen differs from the structure and bonding in bismuth. So nitrogen is a simple covalent molecule with weak intermolecular forces. What that means is that nitrogen is a diatomic, it's an N2 molecule. So there would be small, tiny N2 molecules. And uh, the molecules will have very weak intermolecular forces between them, which is why the molecules are not attracting each other. They would be in gaseous state. One nitrogen molecule would be moving freely. The other nitrogen molecule and two molecule would be moving freely as well. On the other hand, as we discussed, bismuth has a giant metallic lattice where you'll have positive ions in a sea of free moving electrons. So since it's a two mark question, we don't, we're not going to describe the details. Uh, the two marks, uh, we don't need to go into a lot of detail. It's a giant metallic lattice. The positive ions, uh, there's a lattice of positive ions, metal ions, in a sea of free moving or delocalized electrons. So that would be your answer, two mark answer. Nitrogen is simple covalent, bismuth is a giant metallic lattice. And let's move to the next part, which is that uh, antimony reacts with chlorine to form uh, antimony 3 chloride. And we need to construct the equation for this reaction. Now the symbol for antimony is SP. So SP is reacting with chlorine, which should is diatomic. And it's going to produce uh, antimony 3 chloride. So SP is going to have a charge of plus 3. It's antimony 3. So it's plus 3. Chlorine is in group 7. It has a charge of minus 1. So if you if you use crisscross, it's uh, the formula of the compound is going to be SPCl3. If you if you do crisscross, we can rub off the charges. So I'm going to remove the charges. And the next thing is I need to balance this equation. So uh, the first thing is 3 chlorines, 2 chlorines. I'm going to multiply this by 3 and this by 2. 
that would give me six chlorines on both sides so both sides six chlorines but over here i have two antimonies two sb atoms so i need two sb over here so now it's a it's a balanced equation the next part of the question states that nitrogen is present in dry air state the percentage by volume of nitrogen in dry air it is you should be uh, familiar with this it should be 78 percent 78 percent of air is nitrogen uh, I'll also mention all the other substances. 21% is oxygen. Then you have 1%. Uh, the other gases that include uh, noble gases like argon. And the other, all, the, all the rest of the gases are present in uh, trace amounts. You have carbon dioxide gas, etc. So remember this composition of air. Let's move to the next part, which is that nitrogen oxides are atmospheric pollutants. The concentration of nitrogen oxides in the exhaust from car engines is decreased by using a catalytic converter. Describe the reaction that occurs in a catalytic converter which helps to remove nitrogen oxides from car exhausts. So we need to describe the reaction, what's happening in the catalytic converter. So the first thing is uh, nitrogen oxides, nitrogen monoxide or NO2 are produced in the car engine. Why, do, why are they produced? Because nitrogen in the air uh, due to the high temperature, the car engine reacts with oxygen in the air to produce these oxides. Now, these oxides are your pollutants that are produced in the, in the car uh, engine. The other things that are produced in the car engine are carbon monoxide. That's also a harmful gas because of incomplete combustion of the fuel. So, because of incomplete combustion, you have carbon monoxide oxide also present in the exhaust and this causes choking or causes breathing problems. Now, when these gases pass through the catalytic converter, what the catalytic converter does is that it converts these gases into less harmful uh, uh, products. So, for example, NO2 would react with carbon monoxide in the catalytic converter. So, they're going to react in the catalytic converter. NO2 is going to get converted. It will be converted into nitrogen, whereas carbon monoxide gets oxidized to CO2. And you can, uh, you can balance this equation. There would be two NO2s two carbon monoxides and two carbon dioxide. So what happens in the catalytic converter is that the oxides of nitrogen, they get reduced. They get reduced to nitrogen and the oxides of carbon, they get oxidized to carbon dioxide. So this is the reaction that's happening in the catalytic converter. In the next part of the question, you have to state one of the source of nitrogen oxides in the atmosphere. Like I mentioned before, uh, the air has nitrogen and oxygen. And when the air heats up, nitrogen and oxygen, they react and they produce these oxides. So car engine is one place where, the, where air heats up. The other place is uh, when lightning happens. Lightning strikes, lightning strikes uh, are also because air heats up when lightning strikes happen. And the nitrogen and the oxygen in the air, they react to produce oxides of nitrogen. Uh, so NO, NO or NO2 is going to be produced in uh, whenever lightning strikes happen.